Well, hey, good morning. Welcome back to Rethinkers 40 Days of Prayer and Fasting. We're asking the people of God all throughout Maryville to disconnect from something that is part of our normal life, whether it's food, whether it's meat, whether it's video games or YouTube or Instagram, maybe, or fill in the blank. I don't, you do it. You know what I mean? In order for this, it's not for like, hey, I got healthy because I, you know, didn't eat for 40 days. No, that's not really healthy anyway. But, but no, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm disconnecting from this. So in order to connect with God, Every time I have that reminder, it's just reminding me to, to deepen my relationship with God, to pray for strength, to, to be more aware of God and what's going on around us. And there's something that fascinating that just has not gotten away from me for about a year now. And it's this, that when Jesus, he leaves this earth, he spends, think about this, the last three years of his life, 36 months, he spends over eight, 18 months with just the disciples. He spends 18 months with 12 individuals to create the most important movement of all human history. Think about that. Like like 12 people, right? He's, he's investing into them and one of them actually fails. Like Judas Iscariot goes down as the guy who's going to betray Jesus. Jesus decides the most, the most effective way to, to, to create a movement to change this world is to, small, to, to focus in on individuals. Not the crowds and not like mass marketing and not all this other stuff, but, but to, the, to these individuals. And then after his death and resurrection, he spends 40 days. He's seen by 500 people, according to Luke and Paul. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and he goes up to the Mount Carmel and he meets his disciples. Some are doubting and some are worshiping. And, and Jesus is like, hey, by the way, guys, go make disciples. Like, go do this. Like, this is, your, like, this is what you're going to do. You're going to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the thing that is fascinating to me is this. He does not say, hey, by the way, if you don't, if you don't succeed or if you fail... We've got a plan B. Don't worry about it. He just simply says, go make disciples and baptize them. And then he leaves the earth. And the disciples are charged with this, like, so, such a crucial element that they are to go and announce the kingdom. And for the, like, for the last three years, these 36 months, what do, what do they witness Jesus do? What do they watch Jesus do? It's, it's growing in his, like, his connectedness to the Father. He uses these spiritual disciplines of solitude and prayer and of fasting and of scripture reading and of corporate worship and all these other things in order to connect to the Father more intently. And then he, he grows in these spiritual gifts. He serves the world out of his spiritual gifts, which, by the way, he has all of them because he's Jesus. But I think he has to actually develop them in some degree as well. The scriptures say that he grew in, in, in wisdom and in stature. <clears throat> And as he's serving this world out of his spiritual gifts, he's demonstrating to the disciples, like, hey, following me, it means that you have a connectedness, connectedness to the Father, but you're also being aware of what's going on around this world. And, and you're not just going to be focused in on your connected to this Father and ignoring the issues of this world. But it's about announcing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is near. And what does Jesus continually do? He puts the kingdom of God on display. He teaches about the ethics of the kingdom, and then he demonstrates the ethics of the kingdom. This is what we see over and over and over again. And for Jesus, there's no plan B. Like, the, to Jesus, he's literally giving high school age boys, that, hey, the most important thing to do is to go make disciples. And that's it. He doesn't give them a plan B. He doesn't say, hey, like, you know, phone a friend if you need some help. No, no, he's like, hey, the Holy Spirit's going to be here. Like, wait for the Holy Spirit. But that's it. There's no plan B. Jesus truly believes that if individuals are impacted and encounter Jesus himself <clears throat> to some degree, that he's going to be able to transform them. And then in that transformation, it's just going to be something that is so aware and so attractive that he can change the world through their life and through their story. And as the kingdom of heaven, it starts spreading. It's not about just abiding in, in the Father, it's also about serving this world and announcing the kingdom of heaven is near. And it's also not about just doing good works because that's not right without abiding. Like there has to be this relationship. It's this simultaneously swelling that's going on and announcing the kingdom of heaven. My friend Doug Paul, he wrote a book and here's what he says in this. If the kingdom of heaven were truly present or fully present, everyone would have enough to eat. Everyone would have enough to drink. Race and gender would, would not divide us. Socioeconomic injustice would be put right. No one would die of curable diseases. Sex trafficking wouldn't exist. Every child would have a parent. And everyone would have access to employment and good education. If the kingdom of heaven 
was truly, fully present. And this is our role, guys. As a follower of Jesus, no matter what church you're part of, no matter <clears throat> what your race or gender is, you are here to learn how to like grow in your wisdom and your stature, to grow in your relationship with Jesus and connectedness to the Father, and at the same time, learn how to be how to your spiritual role in our, in our community. And as you do that, you are announcing the kingdom of heaven. And when the kingdom of heaven is fully here, all of those things go away. Like, like the, it just is. And I think for us, we have to learn how to do this in, in 2020. What does it look like for you to connect to the spirit, to, to the father, the way that Jesus did and to serve this world the way that Jesus did through his spiritual gifts? Let's pray. Father God, thanks for who you are. Jesus, thank you so much that you gave us this, this, this witness, this example that you spent three years and 18 months out of those three years, you focused in on a few guys among the other crowded people that were in, in, like in, in proximity to you. You appoint 12 apostles. One of them falls away, and you still focus in on the, these 12 individuals. And then you tell these 11 individuals, hey, go make disciples. Announce the kingdom of heaven is near. And that's your plan, and you have no plan B. Jesus, will you help your followers to get back to that basics? of having a relationship with you and being a disciple and then also knowing what our spiritual role is and is announcing, announcing the kingdom of heaven. We love you, Jesus. And we cannot wait for the kingdom of heaven to be fully present in our community where race and gender issues do not have to be a thing, where every single p child has a parent, where everybody, no matter what race is, no matter what gender they are, no matter what ethnicity they are, they have access to um, um, employment and a great education. Would you help your followers to rise up and to make those things a reality where human trafficking is gone, where murders are no longer part of a marital story? Jesus, would you do something in our, in our midst and through us in ways we can't even fathom right now? We love you, Jesus. And I genuinely pray this. Amen. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon.